As a young coach, I was very, very fortunate to be mentored by some of the best coaches in the game. And at a very young age, they taught me three coaching mantras that have served me well over the last couple of decades. They've served me well in basketball. They've served me well in business. And for those of you that have children, they've served me really, really well as a father of three. I have nine-year-old twin sons and a seven-year-old daughter. And the three that coaching mantras or leadership mantras I'm going to share with you, they make up the foundation of my parenting philosophy. The first coaching mantra, which is leadership 101, is the mindset, it's not about me, it's about you. You should be able to say that to every single person in your organization when you're in a position of leadership. It's not about me, it's about you. You should be able to say that to your spouse. You should be able to say that to your children. You should be able to say that to anyone that you want to have a, a heavy influence over. Now, this is not thinking less of yourself. And this is definitely not going back or contradicting how, how important it is to fill your bucket first. This is coming from a true place of being a servant and showing others that in this case, what's most important to you is what's most important to me by default. See, we know as human beings that we all have different personality styles, different learning styles. We all feel love differently. We feel appreciation differently. We're all different. But when you're coming from a place of leadership, it doesn't matter what my preference is. I need to play in your sandbox. I need to do what's your preference. There's two types of children in this world. There's those that can take an aspirin pill, and there's those that need it smashed up in applesauce in order to take it. It doesn't matter which one you are, you're still going to get the aspirin. So my goal as a leader is to figure out, how do you like your aspirin? Can you take it straight or do you need it with some applesauce? Because my job, it doesn't matter how I like my aspirin. As a leader, all that matters is how you like it. And I'm going to deliver it in a way that's most meaningful for you. So it is the mindset of, it's not about me, it's about you. And if you start to live that mindset you'll see that it actually takes the friction away from leadership. People want you to lead. They will be attracted to you. One of the, the hardest parts in business is attracting great people. We want to make sure that the resumes that come across your plate are the best people. Well, you know how you attract great people? You become a great person. And I don't mean from a status, uh, a place of status. This is not about an accolade. This is about being the type of person that other people want to follow. And you'll become that person if you're always thinking, it's not about me, it's about you. The second is the mindset that you have to connect first and then you coach second or lead second or parent second. You fill in the blank, but you have to establish the connection first. If you get those two things backwards, it's not sustainable. If you try to hold people to an incredibly high level of accountability before you've established any trust or buy-in, or believe-in, or connection, it's going to be very short-lived. And once again, both of those sessions yesterday, with Doreen and with Joan, and, and I wish you all could have, I wish we would have recorded the lunch that we had, because they were dropping some serious wisdom. It all comes down to making connection. If you can establish a connection first, where your folks trust you, they care about you, they respect you, they believe in you, and they are buying into what it is that you're selling. It makes the leading part so much easier. So don't pound your head against the wall trying to get people to do something until you've created that connection. And the key to being able to create a connection is improving emotional intelligence. Because emotional intelligence is arguably the most important skill set required for establishing human connection. And when you can create that connection, your folks will do whatever you want them to do. And they'll want to do it at such a high level because they care about you and they want to impress you. So we always connect first and then we coach second. And then the third, and this one really absolutely is the foundation of my parenting philosophy. There's only two options in leadership. You accept it or you correct it. That's it. You either accept the behavior that goes on or you correct it and you fix it. Complaining is not a third option. It's the easiest default, and it's the one that everybody leans towards, but complaining is not an option. Any behavior that goes on, any attitude, any action, anything that someone does in your organization, either is something you accept as part of the culture we're trying to create, or it's something we're going to, co to correct. Now, 
the, 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 the magic behind the correction comes back to emotional intelligence. If Joan is exhibiting a behavior that is not in alignment with our company values and our culture, I have to find the best way to communicate that to her so that she won't be defensive, so that she'll want to get on board. And that's where emotional intelligence comes in. Uh, Christine talked about that feedback frame yesterday. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. I'm going to make sure that I incorporate more of that into what I do. So if I see some behavior that I like, I'm going to praise it and I'm going to praise it often because that which gets praised gets repeated. And if I see some behavior that I don't like, it's causing some friction, then I need to figure out what is the best way that I can get this across to this person so that they'll want to change their behavior. Complaining won't do it. Making excuses won't do it. Blaming others won't do it. If you want to leave this conference and just feel lighter <clears throat> and happier, excuse me, get rid of blaming, complaining, and making excuses. Those three things will never, ever serve you in any type of positive way. Now, we are human beings, so there are going to be times where even the best of us complain a little bit. Thank you. Great teammate right there. Where, where you complain a little bit. Or you might even have a legitimate excuse. Or it might be in your mind completely understandable to blame someone else. It doesn't make it right. And it doesn't mean it's going to help. There are a lot of things in this world that are understandable. It doesn't mean that they're acceptable. And as a leader, you have to hold yourself to the highest level of accountability. So no blaming, no complaining, and no making excuses. We will accept it or we will correct it. That is it. <laughs>